Mr. Gibson, it is definitely a pleasure meeting you, doing this interview. It really is an honor. You're someone I've looked up to for many years, so I really, really enjoy this opportunity. Well, you were short then, so yeah. you had to look up, but as you've grown, <laughs> you look, it gets less and less. So you were a journalist for many years, at least 30 years at ABC News. You could tell that news was your passion. It's what you love to do. Now that you are retired, what are you up to now? I'm curious. I'm, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a business, I think, where it's binary. You either do it or you don't. It's awfully difficult to sort of keep your hand in, particularly at the level that I was at, which fortunately was, was pretty high. Mm -hmm. um, it's difficult to keep your hand in if you're not doing it full time. So when it came time that I thought it would be good to retire, um, I thought, do you try to, to do a few things? People said, you know, don't you want to do an hour on this? Or, no. Uh, so it really was retire. Um, and so I do a little speech making, which I do basically to uh, get down on paper what I'm thinking about. But uh, for the most part, I am retired. I am slothful. I am indolent. Your golf game does not improve when you retire. It per perhaps gets worse, but you try. Um, my wife and I are doing a lot of traveling. And, um, um, and retirement, I'm here to tell you, although it's many, 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 many years away for you, um, it can be very satisfying, very fulfilling. Do you miss it? No. Um, there are some things that I miss. Um, it is a, it, any news organization is collaborative. And if I could have done anything in my life, I would have played professional baseball. But then they started to curve the ball, and I couldn't hit it. Um, but that sense of teamwork, of dependency on other people, mm -hmm. I often went down to the uh, con control room where they were putting the tape pieces together um, shortly before a program. And we would have five, six, seven pieces in the evening newscast from reporters all around the world. and. At 10 minutes before showtime, probably five of those pieces weren't into New York yet. They weren't done. And you realize that there's some tape editor in Frankfurt, Germany, or somebody out in Los Angeles or whatever, in, in, in whose hands your show exists. Yeah. That's a wonderful kind of teamwork. And so I miss that. I miss the rush of that. I miss the people that I worked with. But do I miss the news? No. The, the business was going in directions that a, I didn't particularly like, mm -hmm. and B, I didn't understand. Um, you understand the social media better than I do. And so much of what's being done now is involved with social media that I don't understand. And so I thought it's time to get out, and, um, and I think it was, it was indeed the right time. What is it that you didn't like about the direction that uh, journalism is going? It is so much more, there's, the commercial imperatives are so much more important, and I don't mean commercials in terms of 30 seconds for yeah. Buick or whatever. I mean in terms of the business pressures. Um, we're getting now more and more news sources, quote unquote, and maintaining an audience becomes harder and harder. And the, the, the lines between what is truly news and what is just stuff that people are curious about mm -hmm. um, is getting greater and greater. Um, not to pick out any one particular story, but is, is the story of Kate Middleton's, uh, the Duchess of, what is she, the Duchess of something or other? Cornwall, I think. Um, are, are the fact that some, somebody took pictures from her from a half a mile away with, you know, with no top on, is that a story? Okay, for 30 seconds one night, but night after night after night, mm -hmm. which is what's going on? No, it's not a story. But, but it is of interest to people. Does it matter in the long run? No. Is it unfortunate? Sure. Um, does it say something about modern society? Yes. But it's not a story. And yet, the evening newscasts are doing it night after night after night. So as I say, the lines between what people need to know and what they want to know are getting blurry. And in order to maintain audience, you have to give people what they want to know and not so much what, they, what you think they need to know. Mm -hmm. The fuzzing of those lines is what I'm talking about. During your last newscast at ABC World News, the farewell video that they put together, that you, it started off with four presidents congratulating you and wishing you well on uh, your retirement. I'm very interested to know, how was it developing that rapport with uh, high government officials, with celebrities, to have so many people that 
think of you so highly. You're right, it began with a bunch of presidents, but what I liked best about that goodbye tape was President Obama came last, and right before him was Kermit the Frog. And I thought that <laughs> juxtaposition was very, was very nice. Um, it, people say, um, you know, wh wh what do you do to prepare for an interview? When you, pr when you interview the President of the United States, it's just different. Um, whether or not that president is controversial, whether or not that president has done some really stupid things in the last month or whatever, the president of the United States is due a respect that, that, that really needs to be afforded in a way that I, I, I don't think you need to afford to anybody else. Mm -hmm. So it's just different. Uh, but they know, they're sort of intrigued by the news business. They, um, they play it more and more. Um, mm -hmm. Um, and, and they know what you're about and, and you can, um, they love to talk about what's going on and they love to talk about stuff that's going on with, with uh, other, I, I remember, um, I remember we got an interview with, with President Bush, the second, with 43, George uh, W. Bush, um, and they led us on Air Force One and we did the interview on Air Force One as we flew down to uh, Georgia and um, they said, well, you'll have 20 minutes with the president, and you're to set up in this, what they look call the Oval Office on Air Force One, although it's just a little mm -hmm. cubbyhole. And, uh, and that's it, you'll have to come in, do the interview, get out, 20 minutes. Okay. We got on the plane, and one of his assistants came up and said, come on up front, the president wants to just talk. And he, you know, I mean, presidents are just people, and mm -hmm. he wanted to put his feet up, and he wanted to talk sports, and he wanted to talk about what's going on and, and he wanted to talk about the networks and how the network news uh, business was going and, mm -hmm. and what I thought the future of it was. It was just, they like to, you know, they like to be able to put their feet up and talk and when you get a chance to do that. Um, we did a show with, uh, uh, in, the, in the East Room of the White House on, on healthcare at the beginning of the healthcare debate. Mm -hmm. And we did it from 10 to 11 o'clock at night in prime time on ABC. But they let us do the news um, in the blue room that night. So at 6.30 we had a half an hour to do the news of, uh, in the blue room. And the president came down, President Obama came down, and he just wanted to, you know, schmooze. Wow. Um, they like that kind of contact. And so if they trust you, and you hope they do, um, it's, it's not hard to develop a relationship if you have the time and if they'll give you the time. And they're, in most cases, perfectly willing to do that.